different um, they all belong to the same category but uh, such diverse group is for the first time so i would like you to genuinely tell me if there is whatever it is positive or negative no problem that doesn't matter but please feel free uh, free to interact finally um, and i hope i could uh, satisfy at least some of your um, concerns like um, i think since it is a diverse group everyone may not be uh, having the basic knowledge that is required in banking and uh, to many people who are not related to this field it will be um, very complicated you might won't have the uh, an understanding of what is banking and actually i would also like to mention that this is not an exclusive session within this six sessions uh, i have been able to touch only a small part of the sector so there are so many aspects related to uh, banking uh, apart from this so actually if you go to the commerce stream uh, com if some commerce teachers take up then they will be able to give you a financial side of this banking sector uh, that i have done because i have st stuck on to the theory part mostly because my area is economics and we are related to the theoretical part only so uh, don't think this is complete or anything i admit that this is not an exclusive uh, session on banking that's perfectly fine ma'am uh, there is no issue with that because no uh, even they understand that any topic not only for the banking any topic what we are handling here with the iip platform uh, we are restricting that discussion to maybe 45 minutes 50 minutes so it is not sufficient for any topic to be we cannot deep dive into the details so that is there but yes they will get an overall understanding of how they how how this uh, sector looks like that is what basically we gain through this yeah, just a glance yeah. or just an idea yes. that yes. so that's what that was my objective <laughs> yeah really yeah and we are in the process of coming up with few more programs ma'am i was just uh, talking okay. to them before you joined so uh, yeah i am in uh, continuous touch with uh, dr rita marje the principal and the management of sukasmi uh, we are planning for to diversified programs uh, rather than lectures i wanted to give them a feel of you know, Uh, the kinesthetic way of learning to return that yeah <laughs> actually banking also requires that kind of knowledge yeah. you yes, can't yes. learn from theory actually you will learn only from practice yeah so we are in the process of uh, designing few programs for that that's great the students yeah. are really lucky to have <laughs> yeah. such initiatives yeah Sir so now now, so now you may start ma'am it is 7:00 okay. yeah okay. okay so our topic for today is green banking which is a relatively uh, new concept in banking sector so this is a new phenomenon in the financial world and banks that play a crucial role in the economic development they are socially responsible and they have to ensure sustainable economic development so that is why rbi and uh, the the whole world they have recognized this concept of green banking and introduced it so there is no universally accepted definition for green banking and uh, different organizations and different countries they have developed their own definition uh, the indian institute for development and research in banking technology which is established by the reserve bank of india they define green banking as an umbrella term referring to all the practices and guidelines that make banks sustainable in economic environmental and social dimensions the first green banking was founded in 2009 uh, in the state of florida and according to the iba indian banks association green bank is just like a normal bank but they have to consider the social environmental ecological factors with an aim to protect environment and conserve natural resources so we can also uh, call green banking as ethical bank or sustainable bank you will find most of the time these terms are used synonymously uh, or um, in, in, in uh, one instead of the other okay so but there are minor differences that's all but in india we use it in the common sense a financial institutions can be considered ethical if they actively consider the social and environmental impact they make ethical banks are also known as value based socially responsible alternative civic 
or sustainable banks. They are working to make the world a better place and hold themselves accountable to certain values. The root core of ethical banking is a core set of principles and beliefs. They remain true to their core, core model of conduct, even if it does not help them in making a profit. Now, there are many differences compared with normal banking. Green banks give more weightage to environmental factors. That is what makes them different from the normal traditional banking system. Their aim is to provide good environmental and social business practice. They check all the factors before lending a loan. So in all the uh, transactions they do with the businesses and customers, they uh, have to check whether uh, the project they are financing, are they environmental friendly or if they have any implication in the future, only then you will be given a loan. That is, you have to follow the environmental safety standards. So hereafter in the future, we can expect all the banks to uh, perform in this regard. Uh, green banking can also be called social or responsible banking because it covers the social responsibility of banks towards uh, environmental protection, illustrating that social issues often interact, intersect with environmental issues. Now, social banking can be uh, defined as addressing some of the most pressing issues of our time and aiming to have a positive impact on people, on environment and culture by the means of banking. Similarly, responsible banking means a strong commitment by bank to sustainable development and addressing corporate social responsibility or CSR, uh, you might have heard, as an integral part of its business activities. There are many overlaps between these definitions and concepts which can be confusing uh, to some extent. And uh, the, But to make this uh, concept clearer, uh, the United Nations Environment Program provided a good comparison on respective definitions uh, that is green uh, banking, sustainable banking as given in the figure. You can see the figure uh, according to the United Nations Environment Program, sustainable finance is the most inclusive concept which consists of social, environmental and economic aspects. But according to them, green finance is a part of uh, sustainable finance which includes only climate and other environmental finance. And but it excludes, green banking excludes social and economic aspect according to uh, UN. So green banking can be considered as a subset of sustainable banking, which tend to capture broader environmental and social dimensions. You can see in the lower part, uh, climate change mitigation is relates to low carbon, whereas climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation relates to climate uh, as such, and then these three together can be called is called as green bank. Okay, and when we consider uh, environmental plus social, it is known as social environmental banking, and uh, adding uh, economic and governance along with this, all these four environment, social, economic governance, all these together constitute sustainable banking according to UNEP. Okay, so the term is a very broad one. It covers a wide range of ideas and concepts under its umbrella. A wide scope of things is included, ranging from the banks offering loans and financial assistance to start startups that are environmentally friendly, uh, and even to struggling communities or to helping individuals looking for affordable housing. All these come under green banking. So green banking can benefit the environment by reducing the carbon footprint. Uh, any idea what is carbon footprint? Anyone? Emission. Uh, yeah, the amount of carbon dioxide that is released into the atmosphere by our, our activities. Okay, very well, good. So in green banking can reduce carbon footprint if followed by everyone equally. Then foreign banks are practicing green banking on a much serious note, but the Indian banks are still taking baby steps away. So green banking combines operational improvements, technology, and changing client habits in banking business. It aims at promoting environmental friendly practices. So uh, how can we do this that we will deal in the upcoming sessions? Okay. So next we'll see what are the um, principles for responsible 
banking. So how can uh, we, there is something called responsible banking, which is again put forward by the United Nations. So they have framed six principles that is to be followed by the banks. So what are they? We'll go through them one by one. First is alignment. So they instruct the banks to align the business strategy to be consistent with and contribute to individual needs and society's goals uh, in accordance with the sustainable development goals and the Paris Climate Agreement, which have been already set up. So they want uh, all the businesses to be in alignment. Second is impact and target setting. They want the banks to continuously increase the positive impact and try to reduce the negative impact to manage risk, people and environment resulting from the banking activities. And to this end, they will have to set and publish targets in order to have the most significant impacts. Thirdly, clients and customers. So they want the banks to work responsibly with their clients and customers and to encourage sustainable practices and enable economic activities that create shared prosperity for current and future generation. Fourthly, stakeholders. They want to proactively and responsibly consult, engage and partner with relevant stakeholders in order to achieve the society's goals. Fifthly, they want the banks to implement commitment to governance uh, to the to these principles through effective governance and a culture of responsible banking. And finally, transparency and accountability. That is to periodically review uh, the individual and collective implementation of these principles and to be transparent about and accountable, be accountable for the positive and negative impacts and their contribution to the society's goals. So these are what the United Nations instruct the world, all the banks in the world to follow. Uh, then we will see what are the green lending products. So how can we practice green banking? So there should be something uh, special in this, something different from the traditional banking. What are they? So that's what we see here. So uh, instead of the uh, normal mortgages and normal loans, we have green mortgages. So there are two types of green mortgages, energy improvement mortgage. So it is like a second mortgage that is used to upgrade a home or building to energy efficiency by installing energy saving items. Like nowadays they promote the solar panels when we uh, start uh, building a house. Here I know we need a, uh, approval from the um, panchayat or to um, build a house. Only if you have solar panels um, or, and uh, uh, rain harvesting system and all. Of course, you can bypass all this um, practically, but theoretically, this is what they say. So green mortgages will be provided if you are uh, demanding loans for such energy conserving. <laughs> then <laughs> then okay. we have yes. energy efficient mortgages for construction of new energy efficient homes and buildings. That's what we said just now. It offers the house owners a discount on the mortgage rate if the house meets a specific energy standard. Okay, so you will get uh, energy efficient mortgages if you, if you build the house based on what they mentioned, like this uh, energy conservation standards are followed by us, then we will get this discounted loans. Then there are sustainability linked loans or uh, revolving credit facilities, which give the borrowers discounted interest rate for achieving ESG goals. Uh, what is ESG? We will see in the upcoming session. That is, um, okay. Then there is the uh, green loan to promote a greener economy, facilitating investments in renewable energy, green buildings and sustainable farming. There are sustainability linked supply chain finance, which is given to the suppliers at preferential rates if they meet sustainability linked metrics, metrics set by the bank. And finally, there are green loan securitization, that is asset backed the security with proceeds raised to finance loans for green infrastructure. So it is uh, these green products are available both to the consumer and the uh, business also. Now, in order to achieve this, uh, what should be, in order to achieve green banking, what are the steps that is to be taken by the bank? Okay, first of all, uh, whatever we learned in the previous classes, all these technology-based uh, findings, or that is what makes, uh, promotes green banking. 
so to go the, the first and foremost uh, step is to go online go, go uh, with internet banking mobile banking uh, instead of branch banking if you go to the branch you are wasting your time paperwork is in uh, there and a uh, lot of energy is also wasted so instead of this uh, you can pay the bills online you can open uh, accounts online uh, transfer funds online so this will save time and energy of the customers and the bank officials okay so and this will also introduce paperless facility so the, uh, that is also promoted by most of the banks nowadays in order to be eco friendly then you can use green checking accounts uh, you need not go to the bank or you don't need the passbook nowadays we already said in the previous classes we don't uh, need to update everything on the passbook you don't have to go to the bank and update all these things if you go to the atm and check you can easily check the bank balance right so the bank kiosks provide us uh, special touch screens and everywhere you most of the places nowadays we can see atm machines so this is called green checking of account when you check uh, account through the atm machines you it is called green checking accounts if you are staying near the bank also you can have a kiosk set in the bank there is a machine set up in the bank where you can do all these uh, transactions and often usage of online banking services like uh, bill payment the using of debit card credit card all this promote green checking by giving some incentives to the customers um, some discounts in fees and all so you have to that is another method to go green or um, utilize upgrade green banking thirdly we have green loans for home improvements so as we said uh, low uh, interest loans will be given to customers who use uh, who would like to buy solar equipment the state government itself will be providing us uh, these kind of energy saving equipments at a lower cost so the rate of interest in some places is as low as 4% and there is the green home loan scheme for from sbi which support environmental friendly residential projects and offer various concessions all these are various there are various initiatives in uh, by various banks which help us to go uh, adopt green banking there are power saving equipments next is power saving equipments that is banks directly contribute to controlling climate change as an initial step they intend to start a campaign to replace all the fuse bulbs in their own premises in their own offices and residences so bank has also initiated a feasibility to study to make rainwater harvesting mandatory in the bank premises in december 2009 the indus in bank inaugurated mumbai's first solar powered atm as part of its green office project it was titled hum aur haryali then uh, next is the use of green credit cards so by banks are promoting different schemes of using plastic money rather than currency note in order to save the environment even notes are made of paper you have to cut the trees right so in you can stop that you can use the plastic money and finally use of solar and wind energy so sbi or uh, in this regard also sbi has become the first bank in india to venture into generation of green power by installing wind mills uh, in various parts of india as part of its green initiative they have installed 10 wind mills in uh, tamil nadu maharashtra gujarat states so these are the steps to uh, how we can move to uh, green banking then what is the, what are the benefits of green banking why should we go for green banking why all these hassles uh, so that's what we are going to see next so firstly we can say it avoid the paper work so paper require uh, cutting down of trees so this can be avoided uh, if we go for green banking then create awareness to uh, business people about the environment many ngos non governmental organizations and environment based they are propagating environment consciousness among the public in general by arranging awareness programs organizing seminars and banks can associate themselves by sponsoring such program that is why actually what we say uh, call as csr which we will deal in the next section um besides many corporate bodies are organizing similar program in their own line of business such as free pollution check program organized by car manufacturer is one example so banks tie up with such corporates and this will also help to brighten the image of the bank 
then loans are comparatively lesser rates. You will get, uh, if there is green bank loan, you will get these loans at lower rates. So, and if you uh, go with the financial uh, environment friendly products and projects, such as fuel efficient vehicles, uh, green building projects, you will get a concessional rate for all these kind of um, initiatives. You adopt as, a, as an individual. Okay. Then environmental standards for lending. Banks follow environmental standards for lending, which is really good idea and it will make the business owners to change their business to environment friendly projects and which is good for our future generation when we consider sustainable development. Then uh, finally, environment friendly products and projects such as uh, fuel efficient vehicles will come up, uh, green building projects will come up. All this can ensure that our future generation is protected from the environmental hazards to an extent. Next, we will see an initiative in this regard that is uh, ESG or environmental, social and governance. So uh, this is a very important uh, concept in the present day and it is a step towards uh, adopting the green banking in our country and, and anywhere else. So this concept was first proposed in June 2004 by the UN Global Compact Initiative, which focused on mainstream investors and analysts on the materiality of and interplay between environment, social and governance issues. So they examined the ESG performance in their fundamental analysis of firms based on the idea that organizations that proactively manage ESG challenges now they are better positioned to deliver long-term results than their competitors. So uh, when we speak about this ESG, CSR and all, uh, don't think every bank is following this or uh, everyone are into this already. It's not like that. Uh, it is just as we said in the beginning, the, the Indian banks are only taking baby steps towards this. So not everyone has been uh, immersed in this or uh, not everyone are following this uh, protocol or these new uh, concepts nowadays. It is only being um, becoming popular, maybe in the near future, uh, we can expect soon, but there are many issues which we will deal. Okay, so in a matter of weeks, the COVID-19 threw the world value chain and economy into total disarray. So one of the more positive result is the shift in the focus from a profit-driven mindset to one of that prioritizes people and environment. So COVID-19 has, had some positive effect in that regard. Never before has it been more evident that social and uh, environmental issues are so much related to economic stability and that can have a negative influence on corporate profit, of course. There is a negative uh, relay correlation between uh, profit and uh, environmental protection. ESG issues cover three aspects, environment, social and governance. So what are the environmental aspects covered in ESG? Greenhouse emissions, biodiversity loss, pollution, contamination, carbon regulation exposure, renewable energy. So these are the aspects that cover under environment. Under social, they deal with gender, equal, gender issues, labor issues, community displacement, human rights, health, safety, financial inclusion, then gender diversity, employee issues, data security, customer satisfaction, company sexual harassment policies, human rights at home and abroad, fair labor practices. And under governance, they deal with corruption, bribery, reputation, management, effectiveness, lobbying. So these areas have to be kept in mind when the banks are framing policies nowadays. That is what is meant by ESG. So, um, why is ESG relevant in banking? That's the next issue. So banks are significant catalysts in promoting economic development. So banks play a very important role in our society. So there is no person in this world who is not having any connection with banks. Okay, so banks are very, uh, very much a mediator. Um, so they ensure to ensure global long-term financial stability and economic development. The banking sector need to significantly change the attitude and action to promote more responsible and sustainable business practices. Uh, leading companies, United Nations, uh, the G20, all share the position that environmental and social issues 
need to be considered in investment decisions and corporate decision making process along with traditional financial metrics all the banks have to understand that any negative esg outcome can affect them negatively and apart from this how can they be have negative impact there will be increased non performing loans what are non performing loans loans which are not paid back okay so what like malia did he just took the loan and uh, uh, went away from india and uh, the bank had to pay the liability had to bear the liability and we as uh, tax paying citizens we also have to bear the liability so such kind of npas it is called npa uh, they will increase due to uh, if they don't if the banks don't follow the um, current trend then there is increased uh, risk of litigation they will have to face legal action in the future if they don't follow the esg risk if they don't um, uh, open up to the uh, disclose the esg risk and the, there will be high cost of capital for the bank itself so the, all these are uh, to be kept in mind when banks don't go for uh, esg or they turn back they turn away from the esg mindset the hallmark of sustainable finance is the integration of esg factors into the dna of financial institution so they co esg cover the development that will change our society our economy our behavior and thus they can have a massive impact on banking sustainability is the mega trend that uh, deeply permeates all levels of society so esg requirements are actually a fundamental challenge also for the banks to overcome in an environment of low interest rate and during this pandemic crisis uh, and due to the operational cost initial cost will be very high when they start all this but then it is supposed to be undertaken they have to go for it even in, in spite of their uh, initial problems then there are three trends to in converging to position esg in the, uh, now this is a test of good banking practices we can say esg is a test of good banking practices firstly uh, the first is climate change and the need to finance decarbonization of economic activity which promises to open up new areas of activity for the banks most advanced economies including the european uh, union they have pledged to become carbon neutral by 2050 now in, in the um, global summits where india also represents uh, they always say that by 2030 we have to be completely carbon free now it is extended to 2050 and uh, it goes on because it cannot be done all of a sudden because we can't uh, make the people become um carbon free all of a sudden and all it cannot be implemented it takes time so the same way and this esg activity by the bank can act as a measure of climate change so as financial intermediaries banks are at the heart of this economic transformation they can play a major role in facilitating the reallocation of capital towards low carbon activities while financing uh, these activities so they will they can um, Uh, get hold of this investment activities they can say they are we will give loan only if you invest in uh, low carbon activities so that way they can influence the society to a great extent so this is a big opportunity for developing new businesses also environment friendly businesses the second is aspect is reputational where banks and business they do not uh, that do not measure up their esg pledges risk being accused of green washing green washing means uh giving a false impression like wh how, what is happening when we watch the advertisements they give us false promises right they give us false impression about the commodity so that is what is known as green washing so um if the banks do not uh, go along with the esg concept then they are also they also can be accused of green washing so they have to face public scrutiny over the impact of their lending practices so in the future if the banks do not keep up with the esg um practice then they can be accused of have, have a negative uh, of financing raw investments which can be against human rights against gender equality uh, which promote carbon emission which is against biodiversity and development so activist investors and environmental groups they are keeping an account of um, all these activities of the banks so the banks have to be very careful regarding their reputation 
But the third is regulation, which will require, require the banks to measure and disclose the ESG risk in their loan portfolios and other banking activities, as well as the impact of their activities across uh, a broad set of environmental, social, and governance considerations. So they have to disclose whatever risk they are undertaking, they have to disclose to the public. That is another matter in this regard. So all the indications are that ESG will become a significant and very significant to the future of banking as a successful digital transformation. However, for this to happen, the transformative potential of ESG across the bank's whole internal and external ecosystem must be fully understood. And every bank has to set ESG goals. So it is very crucial. Uh, not all banks will want to be the ESG leaders. And for some banks, it may not be practical because, uh, as I said, initially, it's very difficult to acknowledge, uh, to completely change to the technological uh, and to provide customers all these kinds of service. Some customers may not be interested in their banks becoming green. So they won't be so much interested. So these banks will have um, less pressing need to develop new ESG services, such as there are some uh, bonds also known as green bonds. Uh, other than the uh, uh, sustainability linked bonds and all. So uh, they will risk falling behind their competitors. That is what will happen in the future. Now, banks can be categorized on the basis of incorpor incorporating sustainability into their overall strategy. There are three categories uh, under which we can classify the banks, the doubters, the pragmatist and the strategist. So the doubters are who consider ESG to be a uh, box ticking exercise and regulatory burden. So they just do it for the purpose, for the sake of it, not with any uh, genuine interest or anything, just to meet the minimum regulatory standard. That's why they will incorporate uh, uh, ESG in their bank. Then the pragmatist, they recognize that ESG can influence the performance, their performance, and they target quick wins to meet the stakeholder requirements. So they will give some more importance to the uh, ESG. And the strategist, they fully integrate sustainability into their business model and consider ESG uh, a part of the bank's purpose. So they will be the most uh, the people who are mostly serious about ESG in the banking sector. So um, we believe that most banks should aim to be strategist. Only then will it have significant impact. Otherwise, it is just done for the sake. Now, why do students study? Just to get the marks. Is that your main aim? No, you have to have knowledge. Knowledge is different from uh, just um, mugging up and uh, putting it into the uh, access sheet, right? So you have to have knowledge. So knowledge will stay with you for, uh, throughout your entire life. So that should be the same way the bank also have to behave when they take up this kind of um, initiatives. So they have to do with full uh, heart, their whole heart, not just for the sake of uh, their school that uh, there will be inspection from the RBI for that purpose. No, it is not to be done like that, but they have to do it diligently and with conviction. Only then they can uh, get the actual purpose. They can satisfy the actual purpose of why they do this. Then we will come to the next year, next one, that is the corporate social responsibility, which is a very important uh, nowadays uh, that is being taken up by most banks. Even in our area also nearby our college, the banks come to us saying that they want to take class on financial literacy or anything related to finance because it is part of their responsibility nowadays. So it is their responsibility towards the society. So the, all these are necessary nowadays. So the banks can't, uh, the bank officials can't just now sit in the bank and operate. They have to go out and interact with the people. They have to um, do their part of social uh, responsibility. Okay, so that is the corporate social responsibility. Not only banks, every institution have to do this. Every business enterprise is supposed to fulfill this CSR. So CSR uh, is also known as corporate responsibility corporate citizenship, responsible business, sustainable responsible business, or corporate social performance. Different organizations have developed different definitions and there is a large common ground between them anyway. A simple definition refers to CSR as how companies and financial institutions take into consideration 
the impact on society of their operational activities so how does the uh, operation of this uh, firm how do they impact the society so that is what csr is about so it requires a built in self regulating mechanism whereby the businesses would monitor and ensure their adherence to law ethical standard and international law norms to produce an overall positive impact on society in the indian banking sector csr is aimed towards addressing financial inclusion provide financial service to the unbanked areas of the country uh, socio economic development of country by focusing on activities like poverty eradication health and medical care rural area development self employment training financial literacy trainings infrastructure development education environment protection all these are taken up by various banks we will see uh, some examples of the initiatives taken by various banks in india uh, later so the rbi insist that the banks have to take such measures for sustainable development of economy then the major thrust area for csr uh, in pra practice is what we just said about that is children welfare community welfare education environment healthcare poverty eradication uh, women empowerment then vocational training all these come under the csr practices then community involvement is the basis of all accomplished csr policy initiatives bank also uh, should introduce innovative schemes like permanent learning programs for disadvantaged section of the society sponsoring of uh, young entrepreneurs providing scholarship and research proposals supporting environment issues such as recycling and waste management of course there are banks doing that then community support program health support program financial support for art and culture so these are some areas where the bank can extend their uh, social responsibility okay then the importance of csr in banks these are the importance we can see uh, it builds customer trust with banks it's a well known fact that modern oh. cons yeah. uh, modern consumers are quick to doubt and mistrust and quick to leave a branch so we don't trust 100% anyone and uh, uh, so uh, uh, they say that we don't most of the um new generation they don't trust companies they do business with and at the same time customer trust is very important for building long term relationship uh, reducing the customer churn and to offer uh, so they banks have to offer personalized service and solutions to build up such a relationship every person is different and nowadays we demand uh, individual attention or customized services so the banks have to uh, put forward with this they have to provide us otherwise they will lose their customer base so uh, building up of customers trust is very important then uh, for the, the csr provides a positive customer outreach now by going down out to the uh, public when they come out to us uh, we are actually getting more interactive with them we think oh we have a uh, positive attitude towards the banks so they can this also can uh, get more business for the banks so positive social engagement improves the organization's public image uh, it, it changes how people uh, look at that organization earlier maybe when we went there they used to behave very arrogantly or maybe they acted very busy so we don't like that so that is our mentality right that's how we perceive we perceive if one person acts negatively to us what do we do we consider the whole of that institution as negative ah they are the whole lot is like this. that's how we conclude uh, so in, if they uh, come down to us with these csr activities naturally it can change the attitude of the people so uh, companies that donate local food um, can be perceived as philanthropic so we we'll, people will be more attractive towards such organizations then customers appreciate csr initiatives yeah, of course if we as i said now earlier uh, once of this sbi officials they came to us our organization uh, and since we belong to the economics and commerce batch they came approached us 
our department because we are the ones dealing with banking topic. So they told uh, we would like to give a session to the students. Naturally, we were very much uh, enthusiastic because otherwise we would have to uh, call, go behind all these banking officials. They are very busy. They wouldn't like to interact with us or come to our institution. Um, naturally, all people are busy. So uh, that will be, have been very difficult. But instead of that, because of the CSR, now they are approaching us. And we have an opportunity to go, give our students uh, good sessions made directly from the banking officials. And even they give, um, they help our students to open accounts also freely with a zero balance and all nowadays we have students have uh, can open accounts. So that kind of uh, engagement will promote customers' attitude towards then there is a boost to employee productivity and engagement also. So actually the, uh, the, the um, officials are also having a good time. So some they may not be interested in sitting all the time in the banks and doing all this, uh, their work the whole time. So some of them may be interested in interacting with the public. So it gives them an opportunity to uh, boost marketing, uh, to help uh, consumer engagement, to build up consumer trust, uh, to enhance employee relationships and to boost creativity. So all these kinds of uh, positive things can happen through CSR. And finally, community CSR program drive real value. So uh, this benefit of CSR are directly uh, uh, in terms of improved customer perception, improved public image, then media coverage, more brand awareness. All these are benefits that accrue from CSR and investing in financial literacy in your community means that your community is better prepared to make good financial decision. That is very good for the bank, isn't it? If the if your uh, if the people around uh, our bank are good are financially literate, they can take good decisions. They will understand the importance of um, saving, uh, the importance of saving in the banks, not in the house. Uh, to how to invest, how to take loan. Uh, how to um, plan all these loans, good mortgages. So they can use the financial tools in a better way if they are uh, literate. So empowering your community to make good decisions actually will pay off in the long run to this bank, to this bank or any other bank. Uh, anyway, uh, so that community, the real value uh, can increase. Okay, now we will move on to some examples of green banking in India. Um, I had listed out because there are so many initiatives by uh, all these banks in, around us. The first and foremost, we'll start with the State Bank of India. This is the oldest bank in India and they have adopted green banking initiatives uh, in the very beginning itself, in the lending operations. So um, in a, uh, with regard to global warming, when the first warning of global warming, warming was given by the United Nations, the bank decided to initiate measures to uh, combat climate change, mainly through two approaches, that is to reduce the bank's own carbon footprint. So whenever we start with the, um, uh, pre um, what is it, uh, preaching something, first thing is to apply it in our own house, right? So the bank, SBI, first, what their first step was to reduce their own carbon footprint, and then to sensitize the bank's clients to adopt low carbon emission now they have won numerous awards and recognitions uh, because of their initiatives in CSR. Uh, like they have uh, distributed lakhs of electric fans and then they have uh, still distributing water filters in schools in India. They finance Save the Child projects. They promote green banking by changing from traditional paper banking to card-based banking. And they also have actively participated in wildlife conservation projects like Save the Tiger. They have launched Green Channel Counter Facility on their day, State Bank Day, which was in um, July uh, 1st, 2010. They initiated this uh, Green Channel Counter in uh, 57 branches of theirs spread across the country. So this was a pioneering concept uh, that would save both paper and time. And they, as I said earlier, they have uh, installed 10 buildings in Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. Then there is ICICI. We know the first, uh, this is the main bank, in, uh, private bank on the, in India to initiate all kind of financial, initi I mean, uh, technological initiatives in banking sector. 
uh, they also have done various csr activities uh, they have liberalized credit by offering 50% concession on the processing fees to customers who purchase zero emission vehicles and also excuse, to customers excuse me ma'am yes uh, ma'am have you moved your slide i am still seeing your green banking in india uh, by uh, no i haven't listed this also. okay 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 get it get it yeah okay so the icic bank offers 50% concession on processing fees if you buy uh, zero emission vehicles or environment friendly vehicles or if you buy homes under the lead scheme lead is leadership and energy and environment design okay so this is a uh, uh, widely used uh, green building rating system in the world so those buildings which are which come under leed uh, if you purchase those homes you will get a discount from iic loan home loan then they also have uh, in an in association with a company this icic bank has developed a product that provides an eco friendly uh, air conditioning alternative to the conventional acs so conventional acs are considered to emit carbon uh, on a large scale so they have developed an eco friendly ac and this icic bank has also initiated programs to sensitize corporate bodies uh, institutions banks and government agencies on issues like biodiversity wildlife habitat environmental laws and so on so icic also is doing a great lot of work then we have the idbi they have set up a carbon desk now they have joined hands with smile foundation in social development initiatives as we said before um, most of the time the banks may not be do it alone so they combine with corporates in such initiatives so that is why idbi is associating with the smile foundation and they have contributed 14 personal computers to the smile foundation uh, which has been implemented in different projects across delhi then energy efficiency is another key focus of idbi and they also have developed the clean development mechanism advisory services uh, so it also implemented a refinance scheme for energy saving projects in the small uh, medium and micro enterprise sector then yes bank Yes Bank is the first Indian signatory to uh, the carbon disclosure project and has documented its carbon footprint. Now they became the first bank in Indian bank in the private sector uh, to go in uh, to accept, uh, accept the UNEP principles which we discussed initially. They have launched India's first social deposit account uh, in association with Care India, PM's Care a humanitarian relief and development ngo working in india so they also has incorporated various initiatives such as clean and green drives energy efficiency practices workplace health and safety uh, and all these are done under yes community initiatives then there is the access bank they contribute lots in the area of uh, education and health care uh, they have set up the balwadis a foundation that identified the need to focus on early childhood programs for 2 to 6 year old kids and as part of the initiatives to support education they have helped in developing learning places for young children living in the urban slum clusters so they are inculcating social and cultural cultural awareness through this also and in uh, august 2011 the, the access bank initiated the process of collecting dry waste generated from the corporate offices uh, and recycled it into notepads notebooks and envelopes and this uh, access bank office located in mumbai is designed and constructed on the basis of lead which we said before according to the um, environmental uh, uh, norms protocols then the federal bank also conduct various csr activities in the area of education skill development healthcare hdfc banks also have sustainable employment and income generation programs for the economically weaker sections sibbi also have so many programs in the uh, in uh, energy they uh, they have invested in energy saving projects and have adopted pollution control measures pub the punjab national bank they promote rainwater harvesting uh, reduce the usage of paper by encouraging email for inter office communication they encourage reduced power consumption 
and they conduct uh, tree plantation drives. Bank of Baroda, they have projects such as windmills, biomass, and solar power projects, uh, which help in earning carbon credits. Then they have made it compulsory for industries to obtain the no objection certificate from the pollution control board in, if they need loans. So that's a very good step taken by Bank of Baroda. Uh, they also encourage paperless banking. And they have uh, increased the number of ATMs in the uncovered areas in order to reduce petrol and diesel consumption because they, people travel to uh, ATMs, uh, long distance ATMs and this will help to maintain a clean environment also. The Central Bank of India has launched green, Go Green campaign. Go Green campaign for its customers with a purpose to promote green banking with paperless and queueless banking. And they also promote the use of recyclable products for bank stationery. They encourage customers also to opt for e-statements, use internet banking and e-voucher machines for transaction. Then a uh, uh, different thing introduced by the Indus in the bank is thin computing. Thin, uh, thin computing uh, is something which reduces the need for many personal computers. So e-archiving, e-learning, e-waste management, paperless packs, energy conservation, CNG cars, and supporting finance program with incentives to go green. All these are initiatives taken by Indus in the bank. The Go Green Initiative by Standard Chartered Bank targets uh, reducing the consumption of energy, air travel, waste, uh, so water and paper by use of LED signboards, construction of green terraces in office buildings, green zone paper recycling initiative, water conservation efforts, and use of wind energy that reduces carbon footprint, etc. These are some examples that the um, banks in India have taken. So yet there are so, uh, many other banks to adopt and uh, go through more, but these are the uh, initial steps they have taken in the uh, towards green banking. Uh, so there are many challenges in implementing, in implementing green banking in India. Okay, so since India is a developing country, we have various uh, hindrances in achieving full 100% green banking. So what are the main issues? Firstly, diversification. So green banks will be screening their customers and naturally they will be limiting and restricting their businesses to those entities who qualify this green protocol. So as we said, uh, those customers who um, um, fulfill the uh, um, environmental norms only will get loans in the future. So this will narrow down the number of customers. Okay, so that will um, uh, automatically result in smaller profit base in, to them. So if they focus on loans on certain industries, they open themselves up to being more vulnerable to economic shifts. These banks are still startups. The banks which have adopted green banking, they are still uh, startups. Uh, that is apparently it will take three to four years for a typical bank to start making money. And many green banks in business today are very new and are still in startup mode. So this doesn't help the banks that are trying to get their footing during <laughs> Okay, uh, the third point is the banks are specialized. Again, while the main goal of a green bank is to do good by supporting those who are taking care of the environment. The question here is just how much money is there in this business? And are, they, are these eco-friendly industry making any profit? Saving the environment does not necessarily equate to making profit. As I said before, they uh, travel in the opposite direction. Hopefully, this premise is proven wrong in this case and that green banks prove that they can survive even as they face restrictive requirements for doing business. That is what some banks are proving at least. Then, the operating expenses and costs are high. The green banks require specialized talent, skill, and expertise uh, due to the kind of customers they are servicing. So employees such as loan officers, they need to have additional background and experience in dealing with green businesses and consumers. Plus giving break to such clients 
through discounted loan rates can eat their profit margins. The next issue is the reputation risk. That is banking institutions are prone to lose their reputation if they are involved in big projects which are socially and environmentally damaging. So there are many cases when the banks may not be able to decide between these questionable projects. So that can lead to uh, the, the damage of their reputation. So there are also few cases where environmental management system has resulted in cost saving, increase in bond value, etc. cetera. Uh, but they have to be very careful while involved, they get involved in the financing of ecologically and ethically questionable projects. Another issue is the credit risk. This arises due to lending to those customers whose businesses are affected by the cost of pollution, change in environmental regulation, and new requirements of emission level. So that kind of risk also has to be taken into account. Then another hindrance in green banking is poor legislation. The government has not yet designed a proper legislation of environmental rules for banks uh, and enforced it. Uh, this legislation is not uh, framed and when a few cases where they are framed, they, it is not strictly enforced. And things cannot, uh, uh, there are, but things can change overnight resulting in major compliance problems for the companies concerned. And this can increase the risk for the banks that have lent to such people. So there should be a continuous dialogue relating to environmental matters with relevant audiences, including stakeholders, employees, customers, government, and public. So proper legislation has to be enforced yet. Then there is lack of environmental audit. This is required to determine the environmental status of a facility, a property, and operation, and to identify regulatory compliance status, past and present problems, the potential environmental risk, and liabilities that are associated with the project. So this has to be done by an independent body or by any government investigation team. Then less attention on environmental risk management. Less attention is given for the environmental risk management after the post transaction period. There is no, no one is there to check what is happening. Once the, even once the fund is provided, no one is there to check whether the fund is being uh, utilized for the same purpose that it was granted to. That is another issue. The non-automation of business process. Many banks have not yet adopted the automation process. Banks should conduct energy audit in all their offices for effective energy management using compact, um, for, uh, for like for example, using compact fluorescent lighting, CFL, can help banks save on energy consumption considerably. So such checking has to be uh, done uh, frequently. Then lack of clear policies, uh, which are required to the present management system to incorporate sustainability issues, they are lacking. Then finally, unskilled uh, employees who are required to implement the strategies properly related to environment. So these are the main issues we face in green banking in India. So to conclude, I would say this concept of green banking will be mutually beneficial to the banks, industries, and the economy. Not only really green banking will ensure the greening of industry, but it will also facilitate in improving the asset quality of the banks in future. So there are a lot of opportunities and challenges for Indian banks in adopting green banking as a profitable business. So as far as green banking in India is concerned, we are far behind our developed countries counterparts. So if Indian banks desire to enter global market, it is important that they recognize the environmental and social responsibilities. And many of Indian banks are making effort to go green by these three, these all these products which we have seen, all these initiatives our bank have taken. We are making a genuine uh, progress, but still there is a long way to go. So that is what we are facing in this present era. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> really, uh, the, today, I mean, this is going to gain more weight in the coming days, the green banking initiative. Not only in green banking, even this concept is uh, getting replicated to other sectors as well, I should say. Yes, it is applicable to all the sectors. 
since yeah. we consider only banking, I have stepped yeah. onto banking. And being a former banker, it gives so much pleasure to know that now almost all the banks are part of the station building exercise. So a lot of initiatives are being taken up by banks. Yes, there are many banks which I haven't covered also. There are lots because I couldn't get enough data. But yeah. uh, these are the ones which I could cover uh, more comprehensively. So this is a uh, uh, this is uh, uh, students have uh, really listened to the other part of banking. This is not about the transactions. This is not about the businesses. This is about conducting the business in an ecological way. That is what a green banking is all about. And regarding CSR, you would have listened that term corporate social responsibility. And few of you that uh, even learned it as part of your programs also. The corporate social responsibility is uh, one big step, one major step what India has taken some time back. And it has been mandated that any companies with a net worth of 500 crores and a net profit of 5 crores and a total turnover of 1,000 crores, if these conditions are met by any company, private or public limited, they are mandatorily required to be a part of the CSR initiative. That is why when we travel across the length and breadth of the country, we do witness, we do notice a lot of initiatives being taken up by different, different corporates. So that is what is CSR all about. So now it is time for the Q&A session. Uh, in case if anyone of you would like to uh, raise your queries or doubts or clarifications with ma'am, you're welcome. Do we have anyone with uh, any doubts? I know this is something new to you. Uh, this is uh, this is not part of your syllabus. You will not learn about this subject in your textbooks. Uh, this is beyond the textbook knowledge coming to you. So do we have any one who would like to have any questions? Yeah, who is that? Hello, sir. We can see. Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, go ahead. So, so the, as Ma'am was telling about this uh, CSR thing, uh, which is common to each and every organization. So, so does that include that uh, they help the people to get some loans or this thing, like for the people who are living below poverty line or BPL? So, does that mainly focus on those people, or is it commonly for all the people? What is being done under CSR? Uh, actually, uh, none of the uh, initiatives I read to these days uh, mentioned anything about reduced interest rate to poor people. Actually, they are doing other services like providing financial literacy or in helping the students get uh, education in those, those aspects. But directly related to the bank, uh, they are, I don't think there is any initiative. I didn't find any, actually. Okay, ma'am. Because like usually what happens is under CSR, we focus only on those people who are uh, under the uh, lower stage or something or the village people who are yes. not educated yes. about. That is true, but in other aspects only. Socially uh, enhancing them only. Socially or economically, but not uh, related to the directly to the banking um, process. Okay, so this is about educating and building awareness among the people. That yes, is the yes. That is more focused upon. It is basically about... Uh, playing their role in the national building activity. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you pick up a, a particular case here in Trishul, from where I'm located, the South Indian Bank, South Indian Bank is a bank which has its headquarters at Trishul, right? Uh, South Indian Bank recently, two years back, they have taken up a big project in Trishul. There is one uh, municipal bus stand, private bus station in Trishul, popularly known as the Vodakia stand. So this was this was in a pathetic condition. Uh, there were no proper uh, sanitization facilities. There were no proper uh, what do you say? No facilities at all for any passengers. And it was just like a marshy land kind of situation. So two years back, they took up that place and they have converted it into a terminal, a bus terminal. Today, if you go there, you will feel that you are in a different part of the world. That much of money they have invested, and this was done solely by Southern India. Okay, sir. So it is like uh, regarding the nation building the focus and yes, most most of most of it are like that. Even they do provide, uh, say, uh, they do distribute laptops to the underprivileged children. They do uh, you know, construct schools. They do develop schools. All these things they take up. Different banks have different projects, and not only banks. Almost all the corporates. I told you that is a criteria for that. 
any company, any corporate registered under the Companies Act of 1956, amended in 2013, if they have a net worth of 500 crores, a net profit of about 5 crores, and a total turnover of about 1,000 crores, it is mandatory for them to be a part of the CSR initiative. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, they have to use a specified percentage of their profit for this yes. purpose. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we can. Do we have anyone else? Anyone would like to clear any doubts or uh, do we have any queries? Feedbacks are also welcome. Yeah, if we don't have any queries related to the session, uh, let us move on to the feedbacks because today this is going to be the final session with uh, Dr. Redo Susan Samuel. Uh, I know you will have a lot of feedbacks, so I would welcome, if not all, at least few of you to come forward and share your feedback with ma'am so that no, it will be useful for her, me, and everyone. So please don't hesitate to share your feedbacks. One by one, you can start. Hello, I'm Vikram Desai. Yeah, Vikram. I'm so firstly, thank you very much for all your sessions. So it was a very interesting sector. Like as the sir told, like banking is not uh, so much of uh, highlighted sector in India. So what, what has happened is we as people who are not into banking, we also got some interest and knowledge about banking. And uh, especially thanks for that uh, capital market session, which was really useful for all of us. And I hope after that, all our investments go in a safe way <laughs> with your guidance and knowledge. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Vikram. I'm happy to know that it was of benefit to you at, yes, at some way. Like it was not in the syllabus, but for us, you took, the, took out the initiative and time to get the slides done. So it was a very <laughs> helpful. Yes. Because like, ma'am, we need some person to guide us at least in the initial stage. If there is no one in the initial stage as well, all our money is going to go waste. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so for that That's why we say that uh, banking literacy, financial literacy is very low in our country. Uh, yes, ma'am. Like even we got to know about the terms which are like we never knew, but ah, we, yes. we were using that, but we never knew about it. Like that. Not so, to teach yeah. you, I also went through various areas where I haven't been before. Thank you for that opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Well, a new learning experience. So thank you very much for that, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Vikram. Thanks. Who is next? Come on, come forward. Let us hear from some three four people. I should call Dharani, I think. Huh? Dharani is Dharani? <laughs> she Dharani had doubts there. every day in the beginning. Yeah. So. Dharani? Are you there, Dharani? <laughs> Sir, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, don't you, why don't you give a feedback of the sessions with man? Uh, so it was a few topics were really very new and it was very useful actually. Um, so practically how it is happening. So till now, theoretically, we were knowing everything in the school, college and all. We, we learned it in the theoretical way. But here, like giving live examples and uh, explaining the concepts with an example, like this is how it will be. And the questions of all the students also is really helpful uh, for us to get knowledge about the practical life, what is happening about all the topics. So it's... Really, very great one. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, bringing it. Yes, I should really mention that the questions raised by the students also are very good. So it's not like uh, just for the sake of asking questions, they genuinely wanted to know. And I'm very happy to have such questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tarani. Do we have Ansa over here? Ansa? Are you there, Ansa? Yes, sir. Yeah, Actually, ahead. I want to thank you and ma'am because uh, for me, banking sector is new. I work for a bank and the corporate world, but I, I never know inside what is the process, how they are doing it. So just okay. we will build everything. Even South Indian Bank, ICC Bank, we build everything. Uh, but never know what is the CSR, how they are doing it, why they are doing it, what is the concept. So it was for me, it's a new learning. So that's why uh, previously I never joined two sessions. Okay. So after that, it was very interesting for me. So I joined and I slowly learned about how to invest. So ma'am told a lot of investment plans. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's not only for study purpose. It's you can implement in your real life. You should. So it's really helpful. Thank you for that. 
Thank so you, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a lighter note, uh, once when your investment starts giving return, a portion of it belongs to me and ma'am. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> sure, sir. What is that? <laughs> uh, the okay. topic of the investments and stock, that was really very interesting, actually. So, uh, to mention that. So, I learned a lot. Even that, I would say it was not complete. Where, as much as I wanted to tell, it was not enough. That time was not enough. It's an uh, investment uh, session. You can take it in every college. It will be a hit for us. Yes, sure. yes, it should be taken. And as I said yesterday, cyber security. When we are more, more acquainted with this technology world, have to be aware of all the uh, threats that surround us. It's yes, not physical attack. Yeah. It is a cyber attack. Yes, 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 we should know. Right. So nice to hear that. Yeah. Do we have anyone else? Sona, would you like to share your feedback? Me. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Actually, your class was really awesome, ma'am. Actually, I know just banking about uh, so and so kind of things in school and colleges, but I never went into deep of those studies. So now seeing those things, ma'am, I got many new things. Thank you for that, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. So Thank you. So, ma'am, uh, if we keep on taking the feedbacks, no, I think it will close the midnight. <laughs> yeah, it will close the midnight. So. Uh, I can I can easily understand from the vibe of the students that now how important the session was this to them, and how truthfully you have conveyed the messages and the insights uh, till the last mile. Uh, so my sincere hearts to you, man. My sincere uh, thanks to you. I would also like to thank once again Abhilar sir and Rita ma'am for giving me such a great opportunity to interact with such students who are genuinely interested in the topic. Actually, we don't find such students in Kerala, so I'm very happy to have addressed these students. And in fact, uh, in fact, I wanted uh, Dr. Rita Madhuri to be a part of the session today. Unfortunately, she is not in town. Uh, yes, uh, she would have joined. So yeah, she has called me specifically to convey her regards on uh, to you on behalf of her. And I'm sure, ma'am, I'll be coming back to you again. I'll be disturbing you now every now and then. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> actually, it's really, uh, it is actually very productive for me also. Because yeah. in order to uh, teach, we have to learn more first. Right. So actually, I looked into so many areas where I, as I said, where I haven't been earlier. Yeah. So and I should say, I, and I should, I should say, your home institutions and fitters college, you know, they are literally gifted. The students are gifted to have a faculty like this. <laughs> That's what I so. said. So we don't have an opportunity to uh, speak to them like this because uh, very rarely we have classes nowadays. Actually, right. we were in the camp for the previous week. Uh, even yeah. next week also we have a bunch of paper. Okay. Rarely okay. see students. So it's a great know. opportunity that I get to. Serve. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so thank you, sir, for finding me from this vast number of mass mass of Yeah, Vasuki, Vasuki, can you can you please mute your mic, Vasuki? Yeah. Yeah, ma'am, it is my pleasure. It is my privilege to have you know, uh, brought you to this platform. Uh, I sincerely, I, I mean, I don't know how to thank you for the contribution, the value addition you have done for my students. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of Sri Krishna Institute of Management and Science, Principal Dr. Rita Marjiri, and all my friends who are here, sincere thanks to you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all the participants who attended all these sessions and uh, for encouraging me and by being present here. Okay, thank. That's a lot of inspiration. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll come back to you, ma'am. I would just want to spend some couple of time, minutes with the students just to make an announcement. And after that, I'll come back to you. Thank you, ma'am. You may sign off. Thank you.